Hello guys and welcome to the Flight Sim Geek. So, against my expectations got some free time so I thought why not make a video related to prepared. Now, in today's video we'll be actually talking about prepared version 2.5 settings for you know, systems with very low GPUs such as mine, I don't have a discrete GPU just using an Intel SD 2500 and maybe a little bit of tips and guides related to prepared and like which version you should buy if you have a certain kind of system and which version you should not buy and small things like that so for those people who are new to the channel I'm just going to give a short could say turn around the system so the system which I have uh, is first of all the version is Microsoft Windows 10 Pro version 10 so that's actually Windows 10 next is in, uh, the system model exactly or specifically is Optiplex 9010 64 bits and the processor is an i5-3570 at around 3.4 gigahertz it can go up to 3.7 at most then the RAM I have is 12 GB DDR3 RAM and talking about the GPU well it's no discrete GPU I've got and Intel SD 2500. So as far as the processor and RAM are concerned, they're like you could say kind of decent, but GPU it is uh, really really low and, and something which you cannot actually you can say run flight simulator that will. Anyway, so first of all, I have the P3D version 2.5. Uh, sorry, I have the P3D version 2.5, and first of all, I'm just gonna take you through the settings that I use for a good frame rate. Now unlike its predecessor that is the P3D version 1, the P3D version 2 gives you an even more control over your simulator through your settings. You've got this um, global setting profile, then you have some image and texture quality now this MSAA and FXAA. Now, these were not available previously, moreover, you can now set anisotropics and texture filtering all of that things through your simulator. Additionally, there are frame rate controls, you can now switch on VSync by not through your GPU, but through your, you can say, simulator settings. Anyway, this version specifically is P3D version 2.5, and first of all, let's go through a few of the settings. Now, because of a poor GPU, I have switched off some of these uh, amazing texture relate features. FXAA is switched off, then MSAA, none. I'm not using anything there. As far as texture filtering is concerned, Anistropic uh, gives you some really good pictures, really good graphics. The more high you go, the better picture you'll have, but that can actually impact your frames. Currently, I'm using Trilinear, something which was available in FSX as well. The texture quality, the best is 4096, but currently I'm just sticking to the medium. It's 1024. Now, hard rate isolation. This is something related to your GPU, where you put some load on your GPU for smooth frame rates and, and improved performance. Along with some really good pictures, but you know, this can only be enabled if you have a decent or a pretty good GPU, which as a matter of fact right now I don't have. So there is an Intel SD graphic card, or sorry, Intel SD GPU chip. So frame rate controls, vertical sync now, this is something you can actually switch on through your GPU settings. And if you're a user of P3D version 2.5 or above, you can actually set it through your simulator as well. Now, the target frame rate. Now, comparing to Explain 10, I use unlimited frame rate. I had a target of unlimited frames, and I got some really good 
performance in X Plane 10, but doing the same thing in P3D, I don't get really good performance. So I have targeted the frame rate to 30, so it's locked to 30, and the vertical sync is on. Additionally, we have this triple buffering thing, and can only be used when you have vertical sync switched on. Although it gets you some really good frames, but one drawback is that there are some input lags. Uh, I'm not sure, but there's something you can say elongated sound effects or stuck sound effect which I get in the simulator, although my frames are pretty much near 30. So that is something which I believe is due to this turning on of triple buffering. Now, why do we have spec ratio? Something which we used to put in through Flight Simulator X, CFG is available here in settings. Then another thing, map map VC panels, it gives you really really good uh, cockpit. You can say quite comparable to a paver aircraft. So this I have to keep it off and this thing, well you can you can just maybe put it on if you like, but currently I'm not putting it on. Anyway, I don't think that it impacts your frames in any way. Now, moving to the scenery tab, uh, the level of detail of the plot radius is currently set to high. Mesh complexity is medium. Mesh resolution, I've put it to 38 and texture resolution is 1 meters. Moreover, the land te detail textures are switched on and the scenery objects, the complexity, density of the senior complexity and oxygen vegetation and oxygen building density are all set to normal. Next, water and bathymeter and additional feature in all of the P3Ds. Uh, I'm currently in the you can say the overall settings are set to medium, but uh, no specific reflections or bathymetry is switched on. The special effects are also set to medium. Next we have this uh, lightning setting, something which you can say is a new addition to simulators. So these three things, first these two options were actually available in Flight Simulator X. And uh, this is the third option which is now available from P3D version 2. Now SDR gives you some really good lighting and some good quality pictures but now all of these three things depend on your GPU and repeating again I don't have a good GPU. Similarly the shadow quality I have set it to low and all of these things that have the cost distance have been set to zero. Moreover you can actually checkbox this certain type of objects and you can select actually that which of the things should receive or should cast a shadow on other objects. But this is a good feature but uh, currently I have set everything to switch off. In weather um, clouds can be another thing which can kill your frame so I'm not using a lot of clouds and this volumetric fog I am not using this this is a new feature and a good feature but can impact your frame so I'm not using these next the detail clouds where there is something very essential for your simulator so I'm using detail clouds and the density of cloud coverage is medium Moreover, the rate of weather change, I'm not using that right now because currently I'm not doing really long flights, so that is of no use. Next, moving to the traffic tab, I have all the things set to zero, no traffic because that AI really kills your performance, it's real performance hard. So these are all the settings I'll make you go through the couple of tweaks which I'm using, although they're not a lot of number, maybe just one or two. So you can have a look at my CFG as well. Anyway this is settings and uh, we'll go for an OK and I'll show you how on my system I am getting somewhere around 30 frames. Now, first of all, let's just uh, 
go to the world and set further in time now. One of the things I want to talk about is that the clouds. If you can go with it, then I think that clouds should be turned off, or you can say try to go for a clear skies because um, clouds are again something which actually impact your performance and are like loaded through your GPU so it is better that you go with clear skies or if you want you can have some few clouds out there and fly through them so we'll just wait for this thing to load maybe and set the weather to uh, sorry the time today uh, let's spring and we'll move to daytime okay anyway the additional things which p3d version 2.5 features are some really good add-on you can not say add-ons are like default aircrafts but they have been taken from like RV simulation so they're like paver if you're using them in f6 but B3D version 2.5 gives you all of those things, several of those things for free. Like the current aircraft which I have is also I think from Iris or something like that. Anyway, I'll just maybe get the clouds off, go to the clear skies and okay we have got a clear sky. Then what you call we'll just take the T6, okay. T6 RS is also an RS aircraft. So just maybe go short takeoff, go through a short takeoff around and just show you what kind of frames I'm getting. In. Now, an additional tip is that you should actually select the, a view which actually suits your frame rate. Now, zooming the cockpit in or out. Zooming the cockpit in or out can actually impact your frames. Now, the closer you move, you'll have a small range, small range of uh, instruments which you can see. But as you move out, you'll have more instruments you can see. But the frame rates, as you can see at the corner, will be affected. Okay, so we'll just fly through, and I'll set a better view for me which suits my frames and my simulation okay so I can get this is better anyway we'll just take off from here a short take off and so the frames you can say are in 20s you can say pretty much in 20s and as you move away from the ground, that is as you take off the as you take off the frames get actually gets better and you can fly a bit more ease or a bit you can say you can have a sigh of relief that your frames are getting better. Anyway we can just move around with some other you can say views and you can see that the reflections on this aircraft are pretty good. Uh, something which B3D or you can say which um, Lockheed Martin is really working on and is getting some better reflections and better views. Now let's get to some other views. So that smoke effect is good. So the frame are quite bearable especially after the GPU which I have. Anyway, that's it much flying. We'll just come back and I'll just drop a few tips to you. Now, tips are that if you are having a CPU which is something comparable in performance or something quite similar to an i5 third generation, then in my personal opinion, you should go for B3D version 2, that's the maximum your CPU can work on. Similarly, if you have anything similar to a to an i5 4th generation, then I think the B3D version 3 
is the latest which you can worry about.